That's why I want us to focus on the best possible option, which is a strong, free and sovereign Alberta within Confederation. If that fails, a sovereign Alberta outside of Confederation, and then we have to start to sketch out what that looks like. It is a chilly morning out here at the McDougall Centre in Calgary, Alberta. We're just a few minutes away from Derek Fildebrandt coming out and speaking to the media. We're not entirely sure what this press conference is going to be about, but I have my hunches. As you can see on the sign, it says equality or independence. There's been a lot of questions surrounding the future of Alberta in Confederation recently, and we have yet to hear a response to this public outcry from the political establishment. Derek Fildebrandt from the outsider, Freedom Conservative Party, currently holds only one seat in the legislature. That's his own, the leader's seat. But it'll be interesting to see if these separatist undertones that we're seeing, at least on this podium, help his poll numbers a little bit. Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining me here today at the McDougall Centre in Calgary. Today I'm announcing the launch of the Freedom Conservative Party of Alberta's Equality or Independence campaign. Last week, the Freedom Conservative Party conducted a survey of its members in which 52% supported major constitutional change from Ottawa within one year, backed by the real threat of independence should that fail. And 41% of our members voted that Alberta should immediately move to hold a referendum on independence. The Freedom Conservative Party's Equality or Independence campaign calls for major constitutional reform from Ottawa to recognize a new and equal partnership with our province within one year from the time of the next provincial election, and should that fail, that we will hold a referendum on independence in its place. Albertans are also proud Canadians, and we want nothing more than to make Canada work. But the status quo is unacceptable, and any self-respecting Albertan has no choice but to look to an alternative. Merely complaining and grumbling about Ottawa will do nothing unless it is backed by real action. That is why today I am announcing the Freedom Conservative Party will be championing an Alberta that is sovereign, preferably inside of Confederation, but outside if left no other choice. The FCP is committed to a firm deadline for negotiations with, it, with Ottawa to recognize a place of justice and equality within Confederation. While a negotiated settlement is best for Alberta and the rest of Canada, if negotiations fail and Albertans are left only with the status quo, then Albertans should be given the opportunity to decide for themselves in a vote on Alberta independence. The FCP is committed to a strong, free and sovereign Alberta. If that is inside or outside of Confederation, is up to Ottawa. Our three-point plan is clear. We are going to set a firm deadline of one year from the time of the 2019 election, if by which, uh, by which to renegotiate a new fiscal, economic, and constitutional relationship between Alberta and Ottawa. Second, if an honourable and just agreement recognizing the equality of Alberta in Confederation can be reached, then we will put that proposal to Albertans at a referendum for their approval and implement those changes to the Constitution and Confederation. Three, if an honourable and just agreement recognizing equality for Alberta in Confederation cannot be reached, then we will put the question of Alberta independence to a referendum to allow Albertans to decide directly for themselves whether or not they accept the status quo or wish to move towards independence. Uh, thank you very much. That's the end of my statement. Uh, I hope that uh, Albertans will join our campaign for equality or independence. God bless Alberta. You'll have to forgive me. The wind just picked up there, so I had to come inside. But before I did, I had the chance to ask Derek Vildebrandt a few questions. Here's what I asked him. You, you just did a Facebook poll. Uh, I know it's a Facebook poll, but what does what, what was the response like? And Facebook polls aren't exactly a scientific representation, and people who follow my page tend to be a little more to the right, I'd say, than the average. Uh, but we were completely blown away. We had 15,000 people nearly respond to that poll, and the results were between 87 and 90 percent solidly for independence. Uh, but our, our membership survey allowed for a few more options to be a bit more nuanced in, uh, in how people see things. We asked a variety of questions, but the most telling thing was uh, the overwhelming majority of the members of the Freedom Conservative Party uh, believe independence should be on the table and it needs to be a real option. Uh, and a, but a plurality of those members believed 
and do believe that uh, it would be the responsible and right thing to do to try to make Confederation work one last time. That Canada does have a proud history, that we have been a great country before, um, but that the status quo is unacceptable. And so we have taken that um, we have taken that membership survey and applied it in the creation of our new equality or independence campaign, which will be front and center as the most important plank of our platform, that within one year of the next provincial election, if we cannot achieve meaningful uh, constitutional, economic and fiscal reform to recognize a place of justice and equality for Alberta within Confederation, then instead of voting on approving a new deal, Albertans will be voting on independence. Jason Kenney has promised to bring forward a referendum on equalization. Uh, do you think that that just doesn't go far enough? Well, it's better than nothing, but uh, look, the NDP suck up to Ottawa. That got them nothing. They are starting to wake up to themselves, I think, that that is nothing. But we've been complaining and grumbling to Ottawa as long as Alberta's been a province. We've always been un unhappy. We've always talked about equalization. So holding a referendum on equalization is uh, better than purely just grumbling, but all that do is it obliges Ottawa to talk to us. It doesn't oblige Ottawa to do anything. And unless it's backed, if you go to any kind of negotiation, you have to have either a carrot or a stick. What is the carrot or the stick that both Rachel Notley or uh, Jason Kenney are proposing? The carrot is, well, we'll give you more money. The stick is, well, we're just not going to be happy about it, and maybe the Liberals won't win any seats in Alberta. Well, that's going to happen anyway. So it's not backed by any kind of threat. This needs to be backed by a legitimate threat of independence. And I don't believe, you don't point a gun at something unless you intend to shoot it. And uh, my hope is that independence is not necessary, that we don't have to go down that road. But I fear that uh, it will very possibly be necessary and that we will have to go down that road. Uh, but that needs to be put in the window as a legitimate threat for reform. And, and let's remember, equalization is the thin edge of the wedge. Everybody talks about equalization. Equalization is a roughly $13 billion program of which Alberta pays a disproportionate share, but not all of it. Uh, we lose $20 billion a year uh, in the best of circumstances. We lose $20 billion a year in net money we pay into Ottawa that we don't get back. Uh, equalization, we pay a portion of. If we're just focusing on equalization, we're going to miss the forest for the trees. We need a place of justice and equality in Canada. That means not just fixing equalization. It means we are treated the same as Quebec. That means we can control our own immigration system. We collect our own taxes, our own provincial police force, administer our own justice system, that we have our own Alberta pension plan, and hopefully our own Alberta employment insurance program to stop the ripoff. And stopping at equalization, that's like going to buy a car and just buying the tires. We've heard rumors that Jason Kenney might be going back to Ottawa eventually after he's done being Premier. Uh, he might want to be Prime Minister one day. Do you think that that is uh, going to be a hindrance to him? Uh, it, it might stop him from putting Alberta first? Well, Jason Kenney would be the, just the second PC leader in a row to plan to become Alberta Premier and then go back off to Ottawa. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm not... I'm not going to put my money that Andrew Scheer is going to win the next election. And if Andrew Scheer does not win the next election, I think it's a, it's a pretty good bet that Jason Kenney will go back to where he really wants to be, which is federal politics in Ottawa. Uh, that he'll put in a small tour of duty here and then go off. Uh, that's something that he's going to have to answer for. If, uh, you know, is he willing to make a firm commitment to Albertans that if he's elected premier, that he will not simply uh, leave partway through the term to go to Ottawa? But, you know, even if he signs, uh, puts a signature on a big guarantee, those guarantees mean nothing. We all remember the grassroots guarantee, open nominations. We remember the grassroots guarantee on policy. The members set the policy. And then we know how long those things lasted as soon as they're inconvenient. So uh, I'm not sure we can really believe much that he says. But this is all important because we, we do know that it is his ambition to go back to Ottawa as a federal politician again in the event that Andrew Scheer loses the next uh, federal election. And that means that uh, he is going to be much more tepid and soft in championing the cause of Alberta uh, because you can't champion Alberta and run for national office at the same time in the way that is necessary. Uh, Stephen Harper was a genuine Alberta patriot. He was a signatory to the Alberta Agenda, uh, which became known as the Firewall Letter, which was an absolutely fundamental document that could have pulled us out of the mess we're in right now. But when he went to Ottawa, it's not that he stopped believing in those things. It's just that when you're running for prime minister, you're trying to get votes in Ontario, in Quebec, in Atlantic Canada, parts of B.C., they're not interested in hearing about firewalls protecting Alberta's sovereignty within Confederation. Um, so no one running for 
national office trying to become prime minister is going to be able to do what's necessary. That's why the Alberta agenda needs to be an Alberta initiative. We might, we might get some federal allies from time to time, but uh, anyone who in the back of their mind has got their eye on a different prize, an eye in Ottawa, they're not going to be championing uh, Alberta uh, first, last and always. So worst case scenario, we, uh, we end up having an independence referendum. Does an independent Alberta look, uh, what does an independent Alberta look like to you? Does it include Saskatchewan, Manitoba, BC? Well, that's, that's an inevitable question. What does an independent Alberta look like? I say my genuine preference is, not an, is, a, is a sovereign Alberta inside of Confederation. But if that's not possible, then we have to have a sovereign Alberta outside of Confederation. What that looks like, there's a lot of different options. If we do move, if, if negotiations fail, to for an equal and sovereign Alberta within Confederation, and we do look towards a referendum on independence, then we have to start seriously considering what that looks like. Is it just Alberta? Is it is it the West minus BC or including BC if they get rid of an insane government? Uh, is it a republic? Is it a continued constitutional monarchy? Uh, there's a lot of major, you know, the question of the United States. There's a lot of different options, and I'm sure uh, even if people agree on independence, we'll all start disagreeing with each other immediately on what it's supposed to look like afterwards. But uh, that's why I want us to focus on the best possible option, which is a strong, free, and sovereign Alberta within Confederation. If that fails, a sovereign Alberta outside of Confederation, and then we have to start to sketch out what that looks like. Let's just take a moment to think about the gravity of what just happened. There is now a sovereigntist party in Alberta that holds a seat in the legislature. You know, for the magnitude of what we just saw, there was a severe shortage of journalists who showed up to this press conference. After all, these are the kind of ideas that the mainstream media wants to keep away from you, out of your head. It's wrong, think. Now, you know the rebel. We don't support Alberta separation. We don't support Derek Fildebrandt. But we equally don't oppose them, and that's just as important. We're just here to give you the facts, and we're going to keep doing that even if the mainstream media wants to sweep populist ideas under the rug, they do it at their own peril. We're going to make sure that our viewers get a fair crack at hearing both sides of the story. You can make your own judgments. In Calgary, Alberta, Canada, at least for now, this is Kean Bexty for the Rebel.me. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the coverage. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook, you know the drill.